Right. <clears throat> Shalom, first and foremost, all praises, honor, and glory as always be unto Yahweh, Baha Shem Yahweh Shai, Baha Rakak Dash, which is the Paleo Hebrew for the name of the Heavenly Father being Yahweh, and that of His Son being Yahweh Shai, the only names in which salvation could be obtained, whether you could receive it or not, man, according to these scriptures. I'd like to give double honors to the elders and the apostles at GMS Grand Millstone, who through the spirit and power of Yahweh Baha Shem Yahweh Shai, rule all of the nation of Israel well today. And peace, love, blessing, salutations be unto the elect of the house of Israel who are pushing this truth and truth and sincerity and charity and faith and who are able to receive these things that are needful for salvation, man. All right. Providing their bodies as a living sacrifice, risking their lives for this truth, man. All right. And as you saw in the video and as you see here in these pictures, all right, and this, th these ones right here are from New York. You have the National Guard is uh, rolling into these cities, man. Right, here it is right now in Denver, and these streets are empty, man. All right, as it is written, the, the, the storehouses shall be shut, man. All right? <clears throat> and and meanwhile, you know, I was watching, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, news, you know, a, a, a different uh, uh, news media outlet, and they're trying to calm people down, you know, telling them, hey, you know, the only thing that the National Guard is here for is to help the Red Cross, all right, to, to give out food. Well, if they're giving out food, man, what are they doing with these big ass guns on these on on these uh, uh, vehicles here, man? What is it? What is the need for all these weapons? You see? And you know the point I want to get at, man. You know, cause cause here it is, 2020, and all this prophecy is unrolling, man. And Lord willing, things progress to get worse because we know in order for things to get better, they first have to get worse, man. All right. But uh. Here it is, all this is going on, man. We need, to, we need to know not to trust Esau, man. All right, because Esau is going to be telling you all sorts of bullshit, man. We already know what his, uh, uh, what, what his <coughs> characteristics are like, man. And that's why the book of Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 12 and verse 11, it says, or 10, it says, Never trust thine enemy, for like as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. That's right, man. So never trust thine enemy, man. All right, we'll, we'll take things Esau has to say with a grain of salt. When I say Esau, I'm talking about the elites of this world, man. All right, those who are who, those who uh, be, uh, those who who reign on this planet, okay? And that's Esau, Edom. All right, the 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 chief characters. All right, being those elites, man. All right, which would be the so-called white man. All right, you have your Rockefellers, your Duponts, so on and so forth, man. They're the the bank owners. All right, the, some people call them the Illuminati. But they, 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 they basically own the planet Earth, man. They're the shot callers. And America is used as a tool, according to the book of Revelations, man, the whore that sits on the beast. Okay, so America's pushing forth this agenda, all right, which then all these other nations follow after it. But yet, sitting on that high horse, all right, is the elites of Esau, man. All right, so whatever's being pushed, man, we know to think twice. We know to question everything, man. Okay? All right, never, never trust in Esau. Even, even living on this side of this side of the world man anything that any kind of agreement that you make with them there's there's almost a double double standard with it man something turns around and stabs you in the back for instance you go buy a house you know yeah you have two different types of uh insurance all right you have your uh uh you know your your regular insurance which is like around four or whatever percent and then you have your total interest percentage which usually equals out to you paying double uh for that house man so if you get a three hundred thousand dollar house you're paying six hundred thousand all right, so you're wasting your whole life paying those elites, man. All right, and that's why the scriptures say what? Micah 2 and 10, depart for this is not your rest. All right, but, you know, that just being a small example, anytime you take a pact or a league with these guys, man, it ends up biting you in the back. Look at the, look at the Gadites, man. Look at the Native Americans. Let's go ahead and grab another piece. All right. This is the book of Psalms, uh, chapter... 55 and verse 21 and it reads the words of his mouth i'll go ahead and go to uh, verse 20 he put forth his hands against such at, as be at peace with him he hath broken his covenant the words of his mouth were smoother than butter 
or Khan. But war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. So here you go, more characteristics of Esau, man. All right, they'll come, you, Esau will come across, you know, uh, uh, pleasing, all right, telling you pleasing things, things that you want to hear, things of that nature. But yet, he's there to stab you in the back, man. All right, that's why we, 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 we're just going to take what Esau has to say with a grain of salt, man. We, we know these prophecies. We know when things are coming to pass according to these scriptures, man. All right. And that's ultimately what we're keeping our eyes on. Okay. But Esau is going to tell you all sorts of mess to, uh, to, uh, to, to confuse you, man. All right. To, and, and you got to be a fool to, uh, uh, listen right unto him, man. That's why, that's why even these churches, man, you have, you have what, 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 what's called a 501c3 charter system, which means you have to conform and regularly report to what your teachings are to the government, man. You see? And, and, and that's what makes them tax exempt. And that's why when you go into these churches, you don't hear these type of scriptures coming out. You don't hear these prophecies coming out, man. They're not warning you about anything, anything that's to come, man. They're in there to tell you, come as you are. All right, they're in there to tell you sweet things, man, make you feel peaceful. Let me go ahead and uh, grab another precept since we're, uh, since we're talking about it out of the book of Ezekiel here. This is Ezekiel 13 and 11. And it reads, say unto them, Salaki, let's go ahead and go up to verse 10. It says, because, even because they have seduced my people, saying peace, and there was no peace, and one built up a wall, and lo, others daubed it with untempered mortar. And if you know anything about uh, uh, masonry work, all right, if it, 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 they, they, what they use today is like a giant, like, vib uh, vibrating machine, man. And they put it inside of that mortar to, to basically get all the air bubbles out. That's how they temper it. Okay, but if you don't do that, then you have all these air bubbles and this wall that's being built is just going to fall, man. It's just going to crumble when anything pushes against it so hard, when you have a force to come against it. Now, that's basically what they're building within these churches and what they're telling you, uh, you know, on these news media outlets in these churches telling you some kind of glorious rapture is going to come deliver you before anything pops up. Man, I'm wondering where, where, where that rapture was, man, because right now they're not even allowed to be in church. <laughs> they're, not, they're not even allowed. The government's not allowing them to go to church, man. So where is their rapture, man? All right, anyway, let's go ahead and go on. It says, uh, verse 11, Say unto them which daub it with untempered mortar, that it shall fall. There shall be an overflowing shower, and yet, O great hailstones, shall fall, and a stormy wind shall rent it. So that when, 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 that, when that force comes against that wall, man, it's going to be obliterated, man. And the reason why is you've been settled at your lees, man. You see, we've, been, we, we've grown to understand what's coming, man. We've been preparing for what's coming mentally, man. All right, not physically. Okay, because ultimately we know the way out of this is through Yahweh by Shimei Shai, man. Not through how much how much weights you've been lifting. Not through how much your uh, of your endless water supply you have at your home. All right, not because you have silver and gold stacked up because you know the dollar is gonna fail. Okay, but just showing you, man, that 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 wind is gonna is gonna hit it and it's gonna it's gonna uproot, man. That, and that's why you know when Esau says something, man, we know we know to question it. We know to search deeper. All right. Let me, let's go ahead and jump back into the book of Sirach and uh, go ahead and hit that, uh, uh, fin uh, continue on after verse 10 here. Go on to verse 11. It says, Though he humble himself and go crouching, yet take good heed and beware of him, and thou shalt be unto him as if thou hast wiped a looking glass, and thou shalt know that his rust hath not been altogether wiped away. So you're going to be able to, you're going to be able to see him for who he is, man. Okay. Verse 12, it says, set him not by thee, lest when, he, when he hath overthrown thee, he stand up in thy place, neither let him sit at thy right hand, lest he seek to take thy seat. And thou at the last, remember my words and be pl picked therewith. That's right, man. You should, you should have understood. All right. To not trust your enemy in the first place, man. All right. Verse 13, who will pity the charmer? That is bitten with a serpent, right? So you got a you got a charmer, which a charmer, you know, is a guy that you know he's he's uh, uh, charming a snake, so the snake will move at his will, and you know he might sing his little flute, and the snake will get up and start dancing. Well, who's gonna pity this man if he gets bit? Right? Just like you have a daredevil, this guy's walking across uh, fiery coals, and when that coal burns him, who, who's gonna who's gonna marvel at it, man? Nobody. If anything, we're waiting for that to happen, man. That might be why you watched in the first place. 
You see? So that's the same with those that trust in their enemy, man. That 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 build up that wall with untempt mur mortar, man. Just being built for that fall, man. Okay, there's a there's an old uh, Gadite parable. Uh, <clears throat> the elder apostle Rakal likes to go into sometimes, man, where uh, you had you had the uh, uh, you had the uh, uh, you know the Gadite, the Native American woman, who had stumbled upon a, a serpent. Okay, and she raised this serpent to uh, health because the serpent was dying or whatever. She raised it to health, and then when it came to health, it bit her. And she turned around and hey, why did you bite me? Now I'm gonna die. He said, why did you trust? Why did you even trust me? I'm a snake. Why did you? <laughs> Why did you regain me to health? I'm a snake. That's my nature. Or like you have the, uh, another one, it's uh, with the turtle and the scorpion. And the turtle's, you know, uh, 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 hanging out in the lake and the scorpion asks him, hey, you know, take me to the other side of the lake. And the turtle says, why would, why would I do that? What if you sting me? He says, why would I sting you? Then if I stung you, we would both die. Guess what, man? He, he takes the scorpion on, on, on his ride across the lake and then he stings him. And then the turtle's like, hey, man, I thought you weren't gonna sting, now we're both gonna die. And the scorpion replies and he tells him, it's my nature. <laughs> why did you, why did you believe me? You see, you know, so just like, just like this analogy here, man. All right. You can't pity those who were told and didn't listen, man. All right. Verse 14. So one that goeth to a sinner and is defiled with him in sins, who will pity? Who or for a while, he will abide with thee. But if thou begin to fall, he will not wait. That's right, man. He ain't going to wait there and by your side and be there while you while you fall down and, and going through what you're going through, man. He will be on his way. All right, verse 16, it says, and, and, and especially these Edomites, man, they wait for your fall. All right, they truly do. All right, you'll see it, you know, may, maybe at, you, know, you might be at a place of business. You have these Edomites, and they're all trying to be the top guy, man. They will throw each other under the bus. They will get each other fired to get to that position, man. All right, as you see here, man, the elite, you have, you have Edomites that are in oppression today because of their own their own elites, man. They want to take every dollar for themselves and make you make you sign sign a, a, a lease for a house. You see? Anyway, let's go ahead and go on. Verse 16, it says, An enemy speaketh sweetly with his lips. You see that? Characteristics of Esau, man. Characteristics of E. It says, But in his heart he imagineth how to throw thee into a pit. He will weep with his eyes, but if he find opportunity, he will not be satisfied with blood. That's right, man. He won't be satisfied with just blood. All right. <laughs> Going on verse 17, it says, if adversity, and that goes into uh, uh, the book of Obadiah, man, Esau will, he'll, 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 he'll take everything. You'll have a thief will break into a house. He's going to take what he needs. Esau will take everything, man. Okay. Which is exactly what they did over here in the Americas, man. Not only did they, did they take you, but then they took this land. And then after they took the land, they put you in slavery to build it up, man. And now, and now you continue under this, under this oppression, man. Under this false sight of liberty. And what do they give you, man? They give you football. They give you all these different sports. You know, uh, uh, your, 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 your movie nights on Sunday to keep you in that simple state, man, to keep you happy with where you are. Meanwhile, they're sitting on top while they're watching all these dummies scurry around and continue this flow of this economy, man. So they could continue reaping the benefits, you see? But according to these scriptures, it's not so, man. According to these scriptures, this place is to be destroyed, man. And after that, that's when righteousness will be reestablished here on the planet Earth. And that's what we're waiting for, man. That's what we're hoping upon, okay? Anyway, let's go ahead and go on. It says, <clears throat> So, uh, let's see, verse 16. An enemy speaketh sweetly with his lips, but in his heart imagineth how to throw thee into a pit. He will weep with his eyes, but if he find opportunity, he will not be satisfied with blood. That's right, man. That's, this, and this is what makes a, uh, uh, you know, this is what makes a great deceiver, man. Okay. Verse 17 is, is, is knowing, knowing how to be, how to be uh, a, a, a liar. All right, the word, uh, the word devil means deceiver, man. Okay? That's why the scriptures tell you that, you know, Esau is the physical counterpart of Satan, man. Okay, so you have these, you know, these particular guys, man, that, that, that everything that comes out of their mouth is only going to be falsehoods, man. 
all right just leading you and if you're going to take heed to it man it's going to lead you straight to your destruction man straight to the pit that's why at the end of the day man we just believe in these scriptures all right there ain't anything that esau could tell us or anybody could tell us to cause us to believe otherwise man all right anyway going on it says uh if adversity come upon thee thou shalt find him there first yep when shit pops off adversity comes and gets you guess who's going to be there that same guy that pretended to be your friend look at uh, uh caesar for example Caesar, an Edomite, he wanted to rule the known world. And the other Edomites, they didn't like it, man, because they also wanted to rule the known world. That's why after Caesar was done, what did you continue to have? Caesars. With the same name. See, <laughs> they kept that same name of Caesar as Caesar was the first Caesar. All right, because they were they were trying to rule the known world, man. And 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 and, and who was one of the uh, uh, famous the famous last saying he had in you too, my son? When uh, uh, when his own when his own uh, uh, disciple, his own pupil, had uh, uh, taken part in killing him as well, man. You see, Esau will kill each other to get that to that top seat, man. That's why you know we ain't even we ain't even interested in trying to get up there, man. We just, we know that our glory is to come here in, in this next world, man. This 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 world has to pass away in order for there to be the next. All right, let me go ahead and get that. You know, some, some, keep speaking on it. Revelation 21 and uh, 1 it says and the and I saw a new heaven and new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea that's right the first heaven and the first earth were passed away man there was a new heaven and a new earth and it, it was cleansed by how by fire man specifically thermonuclear destruction man that's what's going to happen before the earth is cleansed all right 200 million of which 200 million ICBMs to hit America according to the prophecies with, within the scripture, man. Not because we said so, not because we feel like that, but because the, the Bible says so, man. The prophecies told us so. And we, we, and, and if the Most High has promised a thing, man, it will come to pass. All right? He's not a liar. He's not just some regular man that he's going to just be making things up and not, not follow. You know what? I changed my mind. Or, you know what? I, 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 I thought I would do it, but I didn't get to it. I didn't have enough time to get there. All right. Anyway, let's go ahead and. Uh, let me go ahead and get, go ahead and jump into uh, Sirach 11, and, uh, verse 29. It reads, "Bring not every man into thine house, for the deceitful man hath many many trains, like as a partridge taken, which is a bird, and kept in a cage. So is the heart of the proud, and like a spy watcheth." He for thy fall. So you know, but but anyway, man, you know that that was that was about it on that. You know, Lord willing, it was edifying. Till next time, we'll say, Call Allah, Yim Allah, Yabashim Yashai, Bashim Rakakwadash. Shalom.